Before I introduce the, our, our first speaker and, and one of our longest standing partners, I just want to explain something particular that's happening in, in Manchester right now that gives a bit of an added edge to everything we're, we're talking about. Um, uh, for those of you outside the UK, I'm sure you will have uh, uh, been aware of events that have been happening here, not so dissimilar to other parts of the world, Catalonia and elsewhere. In Scotland, there was a, an independence movement, and that's lit a, lit a, lit a flame that is uh, really uh, going through the UK, a flame of devolution, and Manchester's been very much at the forefront of that. And there's developments happening in this city which I think are really significant. We're in a special moment. It feels a little bit like Barcelona did around the Olympic Games. New things are happening to this city. And um, we're gonna hear from one of the people who's been really driving that change. And the reason I think it's important is that for 20 years, Future Everything has championed participatory culture. And we've got a window here to, to change things, to change things in this city, in this, in this country, to, to think about a new way of doing civics, of doing local, local democracy. And this cuts to the themes of the conference, because these local issues are also global issues. They're economic issues as well as cultural issues. The centralization we see, which is the, flip, the Janus face of the sharing economy, has an impact on the economics here. We want to champion participatory culture, and Manchester is today a laboratory of democracy, and we need that bottom-up movement to support our political leaders and to really build a new civic culture in this city. Um, tomorrow we'll have a session, What Now for Democracy? I'm very proud to say we've also got a session, What Now for the Weird and Wonderful? Future Everything has always celebrated the creative, the different, um, and it's wonderful that in our 20th, 20th year we're still celebrating the weird and wonderful. This afternoon we'll ask what now for ownership? Ownership is one of those things that's undergone really profound transformation. Um, ownership at times has almost become a, a dirty word. And in a sharing economy where we can share our time, our things, um, what, what, what does ownership mean today? And what are the, 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 the challenges that faces? Um, on the one hand, that opens great potential, but it also uh, poses real challenges too. And then in the first session, we, we ask what now for memory? What now for identity? How do we construct identity and memory in data? And we'll have some, uh, some presentations from some of the leading designers who are, who are really developing new ways uh, to explore that space, as well as people working in, in policy around privacy. So, um, I'd like to introduce uh, our first speaker. Um, Sir Richard Lees uh, has been one of our longest standing supporters, uh, alongside our, our other partners and sponsors, Manchester City Council has really championed this event and uh, made it possible over the years. And I'm delighted to welcome Sir Richard to say some words to you. Thank you. Uh, uh, thanks, Drew. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to uh, Manchester Town Hall, which is rather more symbolic of uh, Manchester's bourgeois past than it is of its dynamic, uh, dynamic future. Um, I've done this a few times for uh, Future Everything, and I normally come along and say what a wonderful thing Future Everything is, uh, what a wonderful job uh, Drew is doing, but I'm, which I, th I think Future Everything is a wonderful thing, by the way, which is why we've supported it, and Drew and the team are doing a great job, not just in terms of the festival, but other activities that are engaged with in Manchester and elsewhere uh, all, all, all year round. But I, I thought I'd say a little bit more about really about the context within which we're operating, which I, I think does have some parallels with the way uh, Future Everything has developed over, uh, over 20 years. And I say that as somebody who's been pursuing a decentralization and a devolution agenda for at least 15 uh, years now. That what, what's happening in Manchester, what's happening in this country hasn't happened overnight. It's taken a long time to, uh, uh, to get there. Um, Struck by Drew talking about the, the notion of uh, uh, weird and uh, wonderful. And 
made me think, think about is if we as a city had the, uh, a solution to all the issues we face, then we'd be getting on and doing, doing it. We don't have solutions to all the issues we face uh, as a city, and that means we have to look for and we have to try new things. We have to find ways of doing those things that we currently uh, did. There is perhaps a, a parallel there with this, this building. As you came in, if you came in through the main doors at the front, you would have come past a couple of statues. One of the, those statues is Jewel, uh, uh, dis uh, discoverer of the laws of uh, thermodynamics. Uh, he didn't just sort of sit somewhere uh, in an abstract sort of way and think, hey, here's a couple of laws that will go down. Uh, well, he was a brewer. He was motivated by trying to make better beer. That seems to me a wonderful motivation, uh, uh, but by the way, but it wasn't change for change's sake. It was change with uh, a, a real purpose. And uh, that is really something that has to underpin uh, the devolution argument. It seems to me that intuitively, that making decisions uh, at a more local level is right. For people being able to make, individuals, their families, their communities, being able to make decisions about their own lives is right. For decisions about Manchester, being made in Manchester feels right uh, uh, to me. But I th it's got to be a bit more than that because those decisions have to be better decisions. They've got to be decisions that deliver better outcomes and better outcomes for, uh, for real people. And that is a strand of thinking that's developed very rapidly over the last, uh, last few years. Uh, historically, most of the arguments about devolution have, have been about e economic growth, about job creation and so on. Very, uh, very, very uh, important. Um, with a whole body of evidence that suggests that those cities, those towns that have more control over their own economic destiny, not only do they, they perform better, but the whole of the uh, area, the country, wherever they are located, region, performs better uh, as well. That devolution becomes a win-win in economic terms. However, you can have economic growth without necessarily uh, that benefit being shared. And again, lots of evidence that there are places across Europe where economic growth has increased inequality, not reduced uh, in inequality. And one of the strands of thinking that has developed very strongly over the last couple of years is the connection between a social agenda and an economic uh, agenda. How do you not only create growth, but how do you ensure that people benefit from that growth? And if you turn that equation the other way around, if you create the circumstances by which people can benefit, that in itself creates uh, growth. I'll, I'll give two practical uh, examples. A few years ago, uh, Greater Manchester commissioned a major study into our e economy and our economic prospects. Um, Manchester Independent Economic Review, it was uh, independently uh, carried out. Uh, a whole load of uh, uh, teams of economists from London School of Economics, University of Manchester and so on carried out a study and they came up with a series of uh, recommendations about what we needed to do to improve our economy in the long term. Uh, long-term, medium-term and, and short-term. The number one recommendation from that study was that we, if we really wanted to improve our long-term economic uh, prospects, we needed to invest in early years. Uh, not transport infrastructure, not housing, not business support. Actually, the first recommendation was a piece of essentially social policy we needed to invest in in early, early years. Uh, more recently, we've been looking at... Uh, range of issues, we, the terminology used officially is, is troubled families, uh, families that have a whole range of uh, individual pathologies that add up. It might be uh, drug or alcohol abuse, schools non-attendance, domestic violence, uh, criminality and antisocial behaviour and, 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 and so on. And we've identified the perhaps the biggest single factor uh, that goes into all of those sorts of families is worklessness, that there is nobody within those households uh, working. Similarly, child poverty, of the 35% uh, of the families in this city uh, that are in poverty, with, with children that are in poverty, 33 out of the 35 are workless. There is a direct connection between not being in work and child poverty. And 
what that says is fairly obviously that if we can get people into work, then we start addressing other issues as well. We start addressing a whole range of, uh, of, of, of social issues and we start drawing, drawing those things together. But the only way you can do that and the only way you can do it effectively is not to organise public services, uh, whoever carries them out, in a traditional siloed way. You need to start organising public services in a completely different way. They have to be organised around individuals, around families and around the neighbourhoods they live in. And if you do that, you deliver better public services, you get better outcomes for those people, and believe it or not, you even save money as well because it's a more efficient and effective way, uh, way of doing things. And that's where I think the devolution debate has taken us, and it's why, why it's important. It's not devolution for de devolution's sake. Uh, this, we're in a position that we know that by de delivering public services in a different way, by organising them on a place basis, on a locality basis, rather than a traditional service basis, we can do a damn sight better deal for those people who need it most. And if we do it for those, we create a better Manchester, we create a, a better, better country. And I think there are, and this, uh, we, we are on the cusp of a, a, a complete transformation of the way we do things in, in this country. We are on the cusp of a transformation that takes us from being the second most, third, sorry, third most centralised country in, in Europe. Albania and Scotland are more centralised than England. Uh, but we take us to, to one where we become uh, a genuinely devolved uh, country and we'd be a better place and a more cohesive place as a consequence uh, of, of that. And certainly Greater Manchester is the forefront of that. And uh, as a city we want to encourage innovation, we want to encourage the creation of new ideas because we need new ideas, we need new solutions, we need new ways of, uh, way, way, ways of working and we have to try and support the circumstances that, that do that as much as we can. But I think there is a parallel with the way that Future Everything has developed over 20 years, which is something that started off essentially as a music festival. Uh, Recognise that the world's slightly more interesting and slightly more complex than that, and started a particular strand of uh, uh, other, other aspects of art and culture, particularly the digital world and technology world, of drawing those together and seeing that, the, that these are interactive strands, not isolated areas of activity. And in a sense, that I think is what we're doing in the politics of Greater Manchester and have been doing over the last few years, is that same process of drawing the strands together that you need to integrate if you're going to have that impact on, on the whole. So uh, thanks for listening to me on a subject that I can talk about for days, never mind uh, hours. Uh, Really pleased to be, I'm going to have to disappear almost immediately, I re uh, regret to say, but uh, very pleased to be here to welcoming uh, Future Everything to the Town Hall, which is the first time in the Town Hall, the second time, sorry, second time in the uh, uh, Town Hall, to the Town Hall, and uh, I'm sure it's going to be a, a fantastic couple of days. Thank you very much. Thank you.